Transurfer and the Transurfing Curious. I am Renee Garcia and this is Transurfing TV and today I'm going to talk about magic rituals and I'm actually going to give you a magic ritual or at least a uh, recommendation for a magic ritual. If you've not already seen my video on magnetizing, I would definitely check that out, but I'm going to go into it a little more here. So magic rituals, a very, very short part of the reality transurfing steps one through five book, but I believe it's in the outer intention section because really that's what that's what in my opinion a magic ritual is. It's inviting in outer intention it's inviting in what you want via outer intention via you performing some sort of act or ritual or small little thing that is kind of priming your frequency and priming the frequency of your external environment and all the things that pertain to magic rituals, right? Like paranormal stuff and voodoo and Wiccan things and all the different, um, all the different traditions and, 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 uh, you know, when, when people bless things or blessings, that's exactly what a blessing is. It's a magic ritual that's sort of priming the frequency. I bless you. I bless this and priming the, the, the reality so it follows suit to whatever that blessing is for. I mean, if you really tune in to magic rituals today, you'll see that even in Western culture, there are magic rituals like everywhere. Like you could, you can find them just, you know, watching TV or in everyday life. Like if you are watching something and there's a wedding, I'm, I'm sure there's a magic ritual going down in that wedding. Or when people are doing business, there's magic rituals. When people are self-caring, there's magic rituals. Your crystals at home, those are all obviously magic rituals, all that kind of stuff. So before I get started, remember to like this video and comment below. My world is taking care of me to enter my daily giveaway for my reprogramming stickers and reality 2.0 teachable link down below. Check that out, y'all. So what the Dean says in the book about magic rituals is that it's not the actual ritual that creates the magic. So here's the really cool thing about this. You can essentially, and I'm sorry if my nose is running today, today guys, the wildfires are like really, really close to the house and uh, it's getting pretty out of control with the smoke. So I'm sorry if I'm a little bit sniffly. <laughs> so the cool thing is all bad luck omens, all good luck omens, all magic rituals, they all have to do with the level that you buy into them or not. So as he says about bad luck omens in the book, if you, if you think that something's going to be bad luck for you, a black cat crosses your path and you say to yourself, that's going to give me bad luck. You have just tuned your frequency to bad luck. You have invited that luck onto your track or that lack of luck, that bad luck onto your track and you will remain in that frequency because you tuned in to that event and you put a you put a narrative to it, right? You put some type of you put some type of association to it. So this is really, really not good for us in our and our realities. This is what Vadim Zeeland calls the mirror makers, right? This is horoscopes. This is astrology. This is buying into bad luck. This is all that stuff that will present to us some information and say, hey, listen, your day's not going to go that well today or your week's not going to go that well or you just walked under a ladder that's seven years bad luck. You don't want to buy into that stuff because again, it's not the actual thing. It's you buying into it. It's you tuning your frequency. Therefore, you attract that thing that that um, event represents, if that makes sense. So the exact same thing goes for magic rituals, which is awesome because you can get rid of all the bad stuff 
and you can invite in all the goods. So what Vadim says in the book is like a storekeeper, right? In the morning, he will approach the first buyer of the day in a special way, right? Give them a discount, give them more than what they paid for. He will really embellish that transaction with a certain type of energy because this is um, perceived as good luck for that shop owner. And I actually encountered this quite a bit in my own career when I lived in downtown Los Angeles. I had a business down there for a very long time and there were a lot of cultures down there that had all sorts of rituals, business rituals and rituals for luck and rituals for getting along with others and social rituals and all that kind of stuff. And it really did seem as though the people that were more ritualistic were absolutely more successful. I'm not gonna name any of the exact nationalities, but there are some that are like really, really, really into this stuff. And you know, they tune their frequency to having a good day of business and that is what they get indeed. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips for making your own magic rituals. Now you can make your own magic rituals for anything you would like. You could make a love ritual, a business ritual, a money ritual, a self-care ritual, a self-love ritual, a um, ritual to have your home be safe, have your, your life track be um, calm and, and serene and stay, uh, stay prosperous and happy and all that stuff. Whatever you want, right? You can create a ritual around that. So first thing is, is asking yourself, what would you like, where would you like to attract magic, right? So is that again, to professional love, home, um, safety, whatever it is. And then what action feels good to you? So really the action is for me, creating an action that feels good to me, like in the morning, and I know this is gonna sound a little bit funny, but in the morning when I sit down at my desk, even if I have my pajamas on still, I put jewelry on. I have, you know, some pretty nice jewelry and I put jewelry on and this is sort of me adorning myself with the energy that I want to have show up for me throughout my day. Now I don't do it every single day, but I'm pretty good at being consistent like during business days, simply because if I don't have the jewelry on, it actually feels like something's a little bit off. Again, is there something actually off or is it just my perception of it? Well, the perception is enough. So I wanna keep my frequency tuned to what feels good for me. So making sure that whatever action you take, it feels good to you. This could be you um, talking to your crystals. This could be you watering your plants. This could be you putting on jewelry. This could be you eating something or drinking something. This could be you taking a walk around your, your, uh, your landscaping in the morning or outside. This could be anything that you feel happy doing, but have it be associated with the energy that you wanna bring in, right? So my jewelry is associated with money and I want to bring in money throughout my day. So I make sure that the action is an action that I'm going to feel comfortable and is with and is kind of in line with what I would do already and then associate it to that, that energy really existing throughout my day on my track. So action feels good to you. And then obviously believe in it. It's not that complicated. I mean, I have a lot of beauty. I know this is like beauty rituals, right? A lot of my beauty rituals are things that I know will do something to my appearance, but I really feel what's doing something to my appearance is my belief in the thing. So there are a lot of little things that I do and I know people have been like, oh my God, you're getting younger. Well, I've really amped up my self-love and self-care lately, and I really buy into these beauty rituals like 100%, and it does seem like I'm, I'm, it, they're working, right? So I believe in them. A couple of suggestions, again, keep it simple and consistency, and always 
for me, I know what really works for me is amping up my amping up my love frequency when I participate in a ritual. So like the first thing that I do in the morning, very, very first thing now, this is a new one. I've only been doing it a couple weeks is I wake up and I say good morning to my dog and then I go out. I have pretty nice landscaping in both my backyard and my front yard. And I go out into both in the morning before I check my phone, before I do anything, I go out there and I check on all the plants and I water everything and I make sure everything looks really good. And this is kind of like my ritual for nourishing, right? To nourish, I get myself in that vibe of nourishing, growing, seeing something grow, feeling satisfied and watching something grow. And then I take that vibe with me throughout my day. My beauty rituals, my jewelry rituals, my other self-care rituals, and I really amp them up with the sensation of love. So watering those plants and feeling love, putting on my jewelry and feeling love, taking care of myself and feeling love, making certain that you're in that center screen and you're feeling love in that moment. And it will become a ritual that will be a good one for you and help you create a little magic in your reality. So here's my little guy. He's got a magic wand and he's saying, watch this, voila. So whatever it is you want to do, um, the example that the Dean gives in the book is some people like to take money and put it over rub money on whatever it is they're selling or whatever it is they're doing right so whatever it is keep it simple consistency and infuse it with love and create your own magic rituals that are going to be specifically for you and for your stuff and believe in them and love them and it makes reality really really fun and really prosperous if you get into it and you resonate at the frequency of what it is you're looking to attract and you create little rituals around that it is a really really good combo so thank you so much for watching my video everyone and have a good day bye